Good evening. I'm going to keep this pretty short. Um, I had a really nice talk tonight with about six people. I know Lindsay was in there and Kelsey and um, oh, my three students come on. Um, and uh, there were three other people, four other people. But I would like to invite you to pop in on those. Uh, I'm not trying to make those requirements right now. I'm just trying to meet people and chat with you. Um, so I'm going to try to do those on Sunday night. I may do another one because it's a large class. Um, but what I would like to do is I'm going to talk about some videos. Now, I thought I was talking about something else tonight when I was talking to the group, but actually, I, was probably, I think for next week. But I'm, I bought some videos, and these videos, first of all, is Temple. One of them is Temple Grandin, who, if you know her, she is an expert on animal husbandry, on animal behavior, and she helps... Uh, for instance, slaughter plants and people that deal with animals like cattle and horses, mainly cattle. Uh, but she uh, grew up with extreme autism and her mother stuck it out with her and worked with her. And eventually she earned a doctorate, a PhD. Uh, I would just, uh, this kind of a documentary, but it's by a professional actress, uh, Chris, uh, Claire Danes plays uh, um, Temple Grandin. And what the purpose of this video is for you to understand the perception of the world from the viewpoint of someone who deals with a, a child with autism and also how a, a person who learns differently than how most people learn and how she perceived the world and how she was subject to ridicule because she didn't have, she didn't behave in the way that society thought she should behave because she had, she, she was different. But the point of this is that she, she was very successful and she had a great gift to give. And it's a very well put together video uh, movie. And so you'll enjoy the heck out of it. So you'll want to watch this with your kids. It's uh, not something risque or any cussing or anything. I always got cowboys in it, but they mind themselves, I guess. But she had to sell herself. She had to explore all the way. She had people that were mentors that helped her and made a difference in her life. And I was really impressed with this video. And I, and I include it in this class because multicultural is so, so many things. Um, I list things like poverty or language background or being a refugee or but I, I, in this particular week, I, I got two things actually, and I do have a lot of videos. I've got Temple Grandin, talks about abilities. I don't like the word disabilities, but her special gifts. And the second one is called, Do You Speak American? I really enjoy this. It's quite long, there's three videos. And I even added a fourth video, which you can skip through, but it's how people in Appalachia talk. and. And I, I include it because I just know people that speak that way back in Missouri. And so it reminded me of my father, some words he used. Um, but the second set of videos deals with uh, accents, slang. Um, for instance, um, one of the real common ones people know is that, what do you call a soft drink? And some call it a soft drink, a soda, a soda pop. A Coke and a Coke means everything. Do you want a Coke? And then, yeah, I want an orange. Oh, okay. And, and that means not just a Coca-Cola, but a Coke or orange drink. Uh, that's different in different places. So depending on where you are in Nebraska or in the Midwest or in the United States. Um, so that's just one set of terms. It, it goes through, it talks about people in the North and there's a good example there of how an uh, African-American man who is an excellent imitator of accents, he calls and he speaks in different accents and he, you find that the people listening to him uh, either offer an apartment and say, yeah, come on over, we have an apartment to rent. Or if, if he sounds uh, 
different, I'll just say ethnically different or whatever, he, uh, they, they say, oh, we don't have any apartments for rent. And you can tell why, because of racism. Um, there's a little bit about the North. And the, my favorite ones are the second and third ones. The South, which is Jeff Foxworthy territory. And you're going to find this, uh, this video very entertaining, especially this, this one about the South is very entertaining. And then the one about the West is also very entertaining. They talk about Texas, Louisiana, Cajun. If you don't know Cajun people uh, that speak French, but it's now mixed with local terms. And so people, you can hear them speaking, but you don't understand them. Well, it's not really French. It's kind of French, French mixed in with local slang and English. Um, and then it, it travels, uh, all the way through to Texas and cowboys and how the cowboys talk. And it's really a very pleasant thing to watch on TV. And I highly recommend it if you watch it with your kids. Um, and then finally it gets to the East, West Coast, talks about New Mexico and talks about all the tension over people speaking only Spanish as opposed to having to speak only English. And uh, they try to pass Spanish as the official language in some towns. And people got very upset about that, as you would expect. You know, we live in tense times. And then finally, in the West Coast, where it's got Valley Girl talk, uh, it's Spanglish, where English and Spanish are mixed. It also talks about surfer dude talk, which is really kind of thing from the 60s, but it persists in California. And if you've ever watched that uh, uh, Saturday Night Live, they have a thing called the Californians. It's like a really bad soap opera, but everybody talks like Californians and they make really ridiculous uh, exaggerations in the way they talk like, I can't believe you did that, Bill. What am I supposed to do? You know, and it, you don't normally talk like that. They do it more extreme than I'm doing it. And so it sounds really weird to Midwestern ears, but it's, uh, and, and it's called the Californians and everybody has bleach blonde hair and they're all talking like, you know, with that weird voice. It's from Saturday Night Live, it's really funny. And so I may even stick one of those in there. So that's the video for this week. I, I have a longer one that I'm gonna talk about next week, but it turned out I was wrong. I got my weeks mixed up. So right now, I need, all you have to do is a discussion, and I know you have that little paper to write for the 20th. So you don't, you just have a brief discussion to put in there. I do want you to think about accents and how people sound differently from different parts of Nebraska, Iowa, Wyoming. I know we got people in Wyoming. Uh, I'd be really interested in stuff in Wyoming. It's different from say Lincoln, Nebraska. Um, it can just be in word choice, but it could be in people say, you know, I found certain terms very strange. People would say, yes, they'd say yuppers. And I'd, I'd never heard that before. And I heard that, I thought, what is that? That's definitely something in Nebraska. I've never heard it. It's not Missouri at all. It's definitely a, maybe Minnesota or something. I don't know. So I lived in Northern Missouri and so I knew Iowa speech. Not that it was all that different, but they seem very deliberate and slow talking compared to country people in Northern Missouri. I like to think I'm sophisticated, but I know I sound like a bumpkin. Um, and then uh, Minnesotan, if you've ever, ever heard people speak Speak like Minnesota and if you ever seen the movie or the even the television series Fargo it's got dramatic exaggeration of the way they talk although I think Minnesotans are very distinct in the way they speak and I assume maybe North Dakotans I don't know but we always get we always get you know flavors and you'll notice that uh, even one end of Nebraska to the other you'll notice people are in Scotts Bluff have different expressions and stuff than they would have in the Omaha area or near Iowa. So uh, 
this is mainly observational humor, kind of like a Seinfeld episode. But I hope you enjoy it. And it is a lot of video. That one I added about Appalachian talk is a full 60 minutes. You don't have to watch all of it. But I want you to enjoy it. I want, I want it to be, you don't have to read, you just watch, you know, which is not bad, you know. And it has pretty high entertainment value, most of it. So I, will, I hope you enjoy it. And then there'll be a discussion about accents and a little bit also about Temple Grandin. Um, I'll ask one question about how the culture surrounding abilities or whatever you want to call it, disability, special education, IEPs, whatever, uh, or people with limitations, how they have a certain way their world has to be designed for them to do well in, for them to learn in, for them to maybe to eat, to work, to, et cetera. And how a lot of people don't know about that world. And one of the things I learned, and I don't remember who told me this, but it was this semester. A student told me a story about a little boy that was blind and had limited ability to hear and was very frustrated, couldn't communicate very well. And that uh, they told me about a situation where that child was not treated respectfully by the caretakers that care for that child. I don't know if they adopted him or guardians, but I mean, it was like they don't even care to really investigate how that child has. It, it was very upsetting. It was like the child lives in this horrible existence where, where nobody really tries to communicate to the child. And I could add more to it, but I don't want to, it's upsetting. But it's basically the child, the child gets the basics to some extent, but is not really cared for. And it was just heartbreaking. Uh, and, and it's like the inner world of a, of a child that, you know, that uh, people need to be, if people listened and cared, they would care very much about the situation. Okay, I gotta, I'm not gonna talk long. I talked too long on, on uh, online today. I talked myself out, so. Uh, enjoy yourselves, have a good week, and, and do spend time over time watching these videos. You can't watch them all at once. There's probably four hours of them. But you're not having to read any books or writing. Well, you have that one, one paper, sorry. Okay.